Hey guys, welcome back. I am John from borntoproduce.com. So when it comes to recording in Cubase, you really have two options. You can choose to use the control room or you can choose to not use it. So what is the control room and really why would you want to use it? The too long didn't read bit is basically if you are a solo musician, you're recording right next to your computer and you're doing this fairly infrequently, then you most likely don't really need to bother using the control room. Much quicker just to set your inputs, set the recording level, hit uh, or arm record, hit monitor, which enables you to then hear back or at least record, um, hear back what's on that channel. Uh, so that'll be going through your headphones and then literally just go for it and record. However, there are of course circumstances where the control room is invaluable. So let's look at what it can do. So at the moment, if we bring up our right hand zone, we can see our meter section. And then if we go on to control room, CR, uh, you'll see the control room is disabled. Now this is how it comes in Cubase. Generally, it's just set up with the control room disabled. So in order to set that up, we just go to the studio tab, go to audio connections, and then notice here where we've got our output tabs. At the moment, of course, we've got our output set to left and right. So that's uh, my two speakers. And then if we go to control room, to activate it, we just click this little power button here and that's going to set it up and you can see it appear over there in the mixer and it's already set us up a talkback Qmix and a monitor one. We're going to get to that in just a bit, um, but notice as well, if I go back to my output section, it's now disconnected those two connections. So now the speakers are being routed through the control room. Okay, and that's that will be going through the monitor uh, one. So if I expand that. We can see there my analog one and two, which are my speaker outputs, uh, are now going through the control room. So just so you know, and if you deactivate the control room, uh, you'll probably find that you've got no sound coming out of Cubase. That's because you need to go back to outputs and then reconnect your speakers. Okay, just one to look out for if you do deactivate the control room. Uh, personally, I actually just leave the control room running. It's just how Cubase is set up for me. So I, I never even have to bother turning it on or off. It's just always on. Okay, so why use the control room? Well, if you want to record multiple musicians at the same time uh, and you want to send different mixes to each musician, then you can do that easily with what's called Q mixes. So, for example, let's say your saxophone player wants more vocal in their mix as that, what's, as that is what they are sort of feeding off when playing, but the guitarist wants more drums and less vocals. Well, using the control room Q mixes, you can easily send separate mixes to each musician and all without affecting your main mix so you can also send the metronome to any Q mix you like if certain people want it and others don't for example you might want to send the metronome or the click track to the drummer and no one else so even if you're just recording one person yourself perhaps and you want to hear a different mix to your main mix let's say you want some more drums or something because you just need that to uh, be able to get the feel for the track sort of thing but you don't want to actually affect your main mix that you spent ages getting right and tweaking then you'd want to use a Q mix in the control room to do that lastly if you are recording musicians in a, like a separate room like a vocal booth or a separate live room then using the control room allows you to use the talkback function um, so this is the talkback button down here so the talkback button allows you to obviously talk through the musician's headphones so the way of setting this up i'll just go through this very quickly is to go to the studio tab again audio connections and in the control room tab you'll see that when you activated the control room it automatically made a talkback channel now this doesn't matter you can actually delete this and then just create another one it's um, no problem it's very easy to do i'll just do that very quickly as well add channel add talkback and there we go we've got talkback and of course you just route that to a mic so you have your mic um, in the control room plugged into your sound card or interface and you just select the input from here and then of course that's routed through so that's it that's the talkback setup and then to activate the talkback, you just literally hit the talkback button once to activate it. And then you can obviously give instructions to the musician or the singer or whatever. And then you hit it again to stop talking. Nice and simple to set up. So for this recording session, we're actually in the same room as the musician. So we don't need to use the talkback mic. Obviously, we can just talk face to face. 